Though I'm missing you my strength and my pride only God may know why still I will get by I would know that you'd have to go so suddenly so fast how could it be not a sweet
Lord, be with you. Go before us, O Lord, with your most gracious favor, and further us with your continued help. That all our works began, continued, and ended in thee, we may finally obtain everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The hymn, Some Glad Morning. to all just one quick notice I want to inform the church of one or two things one being that the service from here on in will will proceed unannounced so therefore those persons who are assigned roles by way of tributes etc you're asked to follow sequentially as the service proceeds um, this evening I want to acknowledge the presence of the Reverend Michelle Leacock. I would also want to acknowledge the presence of Father Roosevelt Tate, the assistant priest here, who is the officiating minister for this evening's service. 
That said, a very warm welcome to all of you as we say farewell to our departed sister, Maureen. The choir will now render the opening sentences by way of Psalm 121.
Jesus, for my heart. Let me travel in this wide divine that I may see the blessed way. Give me that I may move holy, thine and sing redemption songs of day. I will be the soldier and brave.
Good evening to everyone. Indeed, it's a great pleasure this afternoon to see so many beautiful faces for this Thanksgiving service for my dear beloved sister. I want to take this opportunity on behalf of my family and I to thank all you all for coming. The song I'm going to minister this evening is I Must Have the Savior With Me. And the reason I'm going to sing this song is because to her sickness, when she was in the hospital, she used to look forward for me to sing a song for her every morning. So I would text a song to her. And this is one of these, this is one of the songs I text to her. And she would reply, that's a good one. So I feel it's only fitting this afternoon to sing this song on her behalf. I must have the Savior with me, for I dare not walk alone. I must be his presence near me. Follow 
On behalf of the family of our beloved Maureen Eugene Edwards, late of Carrington Road, Boscobel St. Andrew, I thank everyone who have joined us this evening to celebrate her life. My name is Shardé Boyce, and I met Maureen after I started to court her grandson, Rico Moore. He was adamant that I needed to meet his grandmother, not his mother, not his uncles, sister or grandfather, but his grandmother. It was like only her opinion mattered, so he took me home to her, and the rest is history. Our bond grew, and her many stories of love and endurance shaped my perspective of life and even death. Maureen clarified so many questions I had about death based on her Christian faith. She had a way of removing all emptiness fear and sadness about death. One thing that she made clear was that although death meant the finality of the body's existence, it does not mean the eradication of the spirit. So as we grieve Maureen's passing today, please remember this is not the end of her existence. Maureen was the beloved wife of Emil Edwards. She loved her husband and their union was admired by many in the community. Maureen was a cherished mother of Catherine Branch, Cheryl Haynes, Pedro Haynes, and Jermaine Haynes. From these lovely children, Maureen was blessed with seven children, Julia Haynes, sorry, with seven grandchildren, Julia Haynes, Azari Kamabach, Che Haynes, Ty Haynes, Kina Griffith, and Rico Moore. Maureen was very happy to have lived to see a great grandchild, Zaid Moore. She often vocalized how blessed she was not only to care for her grandchildren, but to be in good health and strength at the time to take care of a great grand. She spoke highly of her siblings and their children. Oftentimes, many in the community witnessed her having humorous conversations with them. Maureen was survived by her father, Uriah Boyce, who resides in the UK and unfortunately could not be here with us today. She was certainly the matriarch of her family, a role she took very seriously. Maureen was the second of 16 siblings. I believe that this position helped her develop an exceptional style of mothering. She cared for her siblings. In fact, her sister Arlette recalled an experience in her childhood which highlighted how serious Maureen took the role of nurturing her family. Arlette recalled that Maureen kept her as a child and one morning she didn't want to go to school and she was crying excessively. So she made up an excuse that she didn't have a pencil. So adamant Maureen was that she had to go to school. Maureen broke off a petri stick crack it open, inserted a pencil lid, and exclaimed, Mommy left you to go to school and you gone left from about here. If that wasn't enough, Maureen followed her, followed her up the road to make sure she went to school. That was the nature of Maureen. She cared and she ensured that her family did what they needed to do to be successful. In return, her family respected and cherished her. Maureen exemplified the goodness of God. Through her entire life, every story she shared was an expression of his faithfulness. You know, we have a saying, 
we rattle off when things are going fantastic in our lives or when something positive unexpectedly happens in our life. It goes like this. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Well, Maureen taught us that God's goodness can be appreciated and is more impactful, not when everything is going perfect, but when he has carried us through some of the most difficult, unexpected, turbulent journeys. The times when all hope seems to be lost. The times when you are most vulnerable. The times when the only words you are able to utter is, God, why me? God, why have you took the person I love the most? God, why have you left me? God, why did this have to happen now? It's a couple of weeks away from important family milestones. God, I was hoping. God, why now? I am sure some of you here today are asking, God, why about Maureen's death? I certainly asked the question in Maureen's presence after my father's death. She shared with me that God's hand is in everything and that his spirit lives on. She also noted how difficult death is, but reassured me that with God's help, anyone can face adversity with confidence. I want to reassure Maureen's family and friends that during this difficult time, God will carry you. Maureen shared stories of her life with me, which reminded me of a poem called Footprints in the Sand. Footprints in the Sand is a popular Christian poem, which speaks about a dream of a Christian. In the dream, the person was walking along, along the beach with the Lord. Scenes from their life flashed across the sky. In each, they noticed footprints in the sand. Sometimes there were two sets of footprints, and other times there were only one. During the low periods of their life, they recall seeing only one set of footprints. So they said, you promised me, Lord, that you will walk with, with me. Why, when I have needed you most, have you not been there for me? The Lord replied, the times when you have seen only one set of footprints, my child, is when I carried you. Maureen shared that her life was not a bed of roses. It was not easy, but she allowed God to carry her through. She spoke of her husband and her working very hard, rearing chickens, selling just to ensure their children could get a solid education. Maureen put in her put in her hard work, but she was always quick to let everyone know that without the goodness of God, she could have never made it through the hardships. I encourage everyone here today to live with a better appreciation of God's unwavering love, faithfulness, and kindness towards us through Maureen's life story. Maureen was creative. She loved crocheting and cooking. She, her grandson, remembered her for her sharp flower arranging skills, while her grandson, Azari, highlighted that he will miss Maureen for so many reasons, but one everyone will miss her for is her cooking and baking. I know all her grandchildren will be missing that element of her. In fact, her four-year-old great-grandson, Zaid, refused to eat his soup, his soup, making it abundantly clear that his grandmother, Maureen, put coconut in her dumplings, and he didn't taste any coconut in his father's dumplings. Therefore, they were made incorrectly. <laughs> Zaid made it clear that he wouldn't be eating them. Even Maureen's talent of cooking was used to promote God's goodness and compassion. She participated in this church's big sales, she also fed many, including the water truck officials, when they came to fill up the tank. Maureen was humble and submissive to God's divine plan until the very end. When Maureen initially became ill, she said to me, I'm not scared. I lived a good life. And whatever is the outcome, I leave it in God's hands. And with this, and with those words, she started to sing a song called Goodness of God. A couple of months ago, Maureen underwent surgery, and as soon as she came out, I sent her the song. 
she quickly reminded me that that was her go-to song. And I, I brought the WhatsApp message here with me today because I, I don't want to misquote what she said. She said, that is my go-to song. I have that for my ringtone. When I went to get my throat done, the doctors asked me what I want to see. And I pray first, I start to sing that song and they join in. We have to thank God for his mercy towards us, his children, end quote. Maureen had faith and she was contented even in the most difficult times of her life. What is amazing was her way of ensuring that she shared God's goodness with everyone she met. She shared with the doctors, nurses, her family, friends, everyone. Maureen had a way of portraying God as what the Bajans say, the best thing next to sliced bread. What was inspiring was her passion to tell of his loving kindness. This speaks to Maureen, who she was. She was who she was as a person. She supported others. She was kind and loved to share. Catherine, her daughter, shared the story of her going on the pasture to play as a child and her mother bringing biscuits. But these biscuits were not only for her kids. She made sure that everyone on that pasture got some of those biscuits. Maureen was selfish, selfless and loved with the love of God. Although Maureen mastered loving and sharing with everyone, she was very no-nonsense. If she had to ch chastise anyone, she would leave no doubt in that person's mind as to why they were being chastised. Her opinion of the situation and what needs to be done to correct the situation. She would tell off the person if she had to while knitting. Knitting was her favorite activity. She would even give you that crochet piece when she was finished with you. She was just as gentle and generous as she was frank. In fact, Ty, her grandson, remembered her for her generosity and how she loved her entire family. And in Kina, her granddaughter's words, she was proud of all of us in our different areas of achievement. Maureen had a special love for Julia, her granddaughter. Julia was appointed head girl at the primary school she previously attended. I remembered seeing the look of happiness and excitement all over Maureen's face as she announced Julia's achievement. Maureen was also very proud of her son Pedro and his wife Tracy's union. She shared stories about how well they took care of her when she traveled to the USA to visit. She also had a special love for her son Jeremy, who and would talk about his love for cooking from a very young age. She adored Cheryl equally and would often refer to her as being frank and no-nonsense, just like her. Maureen loved Catherine and her children, Kina and Rico. Kina was not only Maureen's granddaughter, she was her bestie, as the young people say. You could tell by the loud laughter when they got together that they had a very close bond. The same was true about Rico's relationship with his grandmother. I enjoyed seeing how Maureen mothered her family and extended family of in-laws. I still have memories of Melissa, her daughter-in-law, heading off to church um, with her. She was useful and I loved that about her. I can go on and on of how Maureen showed love and expressed happiness in regards to the achievements of her family. She always used these opportunities to glorify God. Again, I will share with you a WhatsApp message she sent in this regard. She said, I'm so happy that I got to raise all my children and see them become big men and women and they were never involved with anything to do with the law. Again, she gave thanks for his mercy and his grace. By now from sharing all of these WhatsApp conversations and observations, I am sure you are clear that Maureen was a clear communicator. There was a point during Maureen's illness where she lost her voice. And I must admit, I was a bit worried about this because my mentor's voice was gone. And that meant we wouldn't be able to have conversations while driving around. Well, you guys know the saying, don't believe everything you think. Maureen brought life to that saying. 
Could you believe Maureen wrote everything she wanted to say on paper? Through her life, Maureen used her ability to communicate with boldness the goodness of God. She used her life experiences to illustrate his goodness so that the cliche, God is good, now have vivid meaning. And through all of this, she prepared us for this very day where we say, rest in eternal peace, Maureen. The foundation of Maureen's life story is perseverance, gratitude, and hope and faith. Even in her dark, darkest moments, she never cursed God. She always made what she had work. In closing, I want to, to say a few words to Maureen's family and close friends. If you remember nothing else from what I have said, remember these words. God's goodness is constant and sufficient. His goodness did not leave you because the matriarch of the family has passed away. Every day that we live is a manifestation of God's goodness. Maureen's life was founded on God. She has spent her entire life preparing you for her death. And this is how. She nurtured you because she knew she wanted you to be strong. She encouraged you because she wanted you to be motivated to never give up. She showed faith in your presence because she wanted you to understand that there is hope even when life looks dark. Be strong and at peace knowing that she fought a good fight and I have no doubt in my mind that she has heard, well done, my good and faithful servant. So keep the faith and do what she would want you to do. Stay strong and go forth in unity. The first time you are without her for each special occasion, you will be tempted to say, I wish she was here. I know because I experienced death firsthand. And as I told you, Maureen was the one who made it clear to me that God was able and that there is life after death. Remember, she's with you. I, I see the family wearing the scarf belonging to Maureen. And even as you wear those scarves and take a piece of her with you, she is with you in spirit. Because Maureen was a type to share God's goodness outside of her family circle, it would be remiss of me not to use this celebration of her life to encourage everyone here, regardless of whether you are our family or not, to consider God's goodness in your life. Even if your life is not perfect, let today be the day you surrender to him and allow him to work through you. To Maureen, we will miss you. But you have prepared us well for this day. We thank you for all you have done for us. Until we meet again, sleep in peace, rest in God's goodness. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our sister Maureen for burial. Our sister was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore, with confidence, pray to God, our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise her to perfection in the company of the saints. I come into the church to baptism with the holy water, and today she makes her exit using the same medium of water.
God be with you. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister Maureen. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The driver of AA55 has been asked to remove the vehicle. It is blocking someone who wants to leave. The driver of, eight five, of A855, you've been asked to move your vehicle because you're blocking someone. Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember before you today your servant Maureen, and we pray that, having opened to her the gates of larger life, you will receive her more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have served you in the past, she may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth. With the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengthen her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good, her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hands to the poor, yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She is now afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry, her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders, merchant. Strength and, strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is a law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates.
a reader of the word of Lord, written in John chapter 14, beginning at the first verse. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The word of the Lord.
The Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man run to it and is safe. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. My brothers and sisters in Christ, these are words from the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 10. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Before we go any further, I just want to clear up a couple of things. The police officer here ain't waiting on me until after the service finishes. You understand? This is my friend, Sergeant Goddard. So, but that, but that was all right. But I just cleared the air because I know it has some people wondering when it was going back there if it was being arrested. So I just wanted to thank God. If, uh, my brother let him know that we went to school together. And we, we, we <laughs> well, there's a female officer out there too. <laughs> Serious thing. No, we liked to laugh, you know. And um, she and I, we had some good times when, we would, when, I, when I came into the parish. We would just there by the door from time to time. We would spend some time sharing all types of experiences. And I kind of had a nostalgic moment, a more, more or less a deja vu kind of thing, really, when I, started, when I heard the eulogy, because quite a lot of what you said, I would have experienced a portion of that especially her goodness and her kindness. You ever had her sponge cake yet? Yeah. <laughs> you had Marie sponge cake? I thought I was special. <laughs> huh? I lit, I don't come. <laughs> Sponge cake was priceless, man. Awesome. Is my well, man, you gotta let him know them things. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you used to bring them. <laughs> you know, this evening, this evening, this church, this community, is tasked with what I consider to be an uncomfortable responsibility of bidding farewell to one of our own. It is a task which certainly no priest, pastor, practitioner of the faith feels comfortable doing after one would have built a relationship over time or in short time with someone. It's a task which we share with the family and this wider basketball community. It is a task we share with her very close friends, her extended family. It is a solemn reminder that we have been granted only so much time, only so much time on this earth. It is a reminder that eventually, because of that limited existence we have, we would have to part or sabotage, so to speak, with those whom we love as death lays claim to our mortal bodies. In short, what I'm saying is that a time will come when all of us will occupy this space. The reality of death, along with other vicissitudes of life, can cause us to feel helpless and even at times afraid. There are many who question the meaning of life. 
They want to make some sense of their existence. They want to live fulfilling lives. That they're making meaningful, that they're making a meaningful contribution to their communities and that they're part of healthy families where love and respect for each other are signposts on the doors. They want to be able to provide for their families, be known and respected by those around them and trusted in all of life's transactions. Or Sister Maureen had dreams, I'm sure. Dreams of creating a home and providing for her family. We heard it in the eulogy. She wanted to be not just a God-fearing woman, but she wanted to be one who loved the Lord and whose faith in Him was untenable. And through her many ups and downs, she kept her eyes fixed on her Lord. She kept her eyes fixed on her Savior. For she knew, she knew, that the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run to it and are safe. In Bible times, a tower was a stronghold for defense and protection. Judges verse chapter 9 verses 50 to 51 describes how the people of the Bez fled to a strong tower to hide from Abimelech's attack on their city. And in Proverbs 18.10, the writer used the image of a strong tower to describe who God is, the one who saves those who trust in him. I'll share a little personal story when I was a much younger fellow. I was about year high. In 1982, while on summer holiday in Montreal with my brother and sisters, we attended this place called, some of you may know it, Six Flags, Six Flags theme park. And while in the water park section, we attempted to navigate this obstacle, more like similar to what you see down there on Brandon's, that um, air thing you have uh, Brandon's that floats. It was made of, it was a set of inflatable platforms. And so it was bouncy, it was slippery, and it made walking or navigating it, making me walking straight, or almost impossible, because it was wet. As we wobbled our way across the ramps and up the little cliffs and down at the bridges, we found ourselves at times yelling and screaming as we fell unceremoniously into the water. After completing one course, my younger sister, completely exhausted, she leaned on to one of the towers to catch her breath. And almost immediately, it buckled under her weight, sending her hurtling into the water. Why did I say that? Sometimes, brothers and sisters, rather than lean on the strong tower of God when we're tired, or beaten down, we seek other things for safety and support. We turn sometimes to our careers. We turn to our relationships or some physical comfort. And so we're no different. We're no different than that rich man in verse 11 of the same Proverbs chapter 18. And just as the inflatable tower couldn't support my sister at that time, these things, all these things, can't give us what we really need. We tend to think that because we got money. As I say, we load it. We tend to think that because I got probably the prettiest SUV on the road. We seem to believe that because I hold the biggest house on top of the hill in the terrace, on the heights and the terraces, 
We seem to believe that these are the only things we need to make it through life and to beat life's challenges. We tend to believe that because I got the prettiest girlfriend, she looked the best. Or the most handsome boyfriend, most muscular, six pack. <laughs> like me. You know. <laughs> you know, that everything is all right. But we forget one fundamental thing in our lives. One fundamental thing. That there's a God who is all powerful. There's a God who is in control of all situations. And there's a God who provides true comfort and true security for his people. Our sister Maureen was none of the above. She was that person who recognized that in all things, she turned to God. She recognized the need for having God as part of her life. She recognized that the only support that she had in her time of trouble, in her time of distress, in the midst of all her challenges, her God was that stronghold. And let us not forget that this evening, because this evening I come to talk to the living, not the dead. And I hope we can take away from, the, from here this evening a message. If nothing else, let us not forget that in all our going out and our coming ins, over the next couple of days as we prepare for Christmas and we try to make our house look the prettiest in the neighborhood. And we try to make sure we get the biggest and the sweetest ham. You owe me a ham, cut it since last year. I want to get it. I just remember that, so I had to get that in. When we try to do that, let us remember who from whence all these good pleasures came from. And let us give God thanks for all that we have been able to do. But above all, let us not forget, let us be like Maureen, and let us not forget the other person who, can, who is not in the same position that we are in. And so, when we say our prayers at our Sunday lunch, at our Christmas lunch, and our Christmas dinners, let us remember those who are less fortunate than we are. You spoke about the crackers or the biscuits or whatever it was that she made sure everybody gets something. This is what it is all about. This is true Christian living. When we can recognize that in everything we do, there is a God. And not only that, but we also recognize that God holds, is in control of every situation that we are in. Brothers and sisters, we as a people are under attack every day, either physically or spiritually. And no amount of money and big house and care and these sort of things can really protect you, especially from the spiritual attacks. Let us put God first in everything we do. Sometimes, just getting through the day alone demands quite a lot from us. Maureen knew and she understood that she could not navigate life's water courses without the help of God and that her safety, spiritual, emotional, and otherwise, lay in the power of God, who is strong to save. He was her strong tower. He was her rock. And we are reminded today of that hymn. 
On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. certainly a reminder to us that our lives are not fully in our control and that there are many challenges whether it be illness job loss uncertainty about the future which try as hard as you might we cannot ignore deny or escape and death is one such thing today also offers offers to us an opportunity to reflect on who we truly are how strong or resilient are we as individuals, as members of households, as extended families, as persons living in communities, working in offices alongside others, worshiping in the several churches across Barbados, and yes, socializing at the various activities which help us to fill our time. Maureen is a reminder to us that despite our abilities to navigate through and around certain aspects of life, we still need that strong tower. We still need to have God at the center of our life. Because she knew, she knew what it meant to hold on to that strong tower. On Sunday, her daughter said to me, you know, I don't know who I can turn to now. Who do I turn to now? And in our funeral rite, we have, there's that part of the funeral rite. Reverend Leacock, you can look for it for me in, um, under the committal, where it says, who do we turn to for help but to you, O Lord? who are justly angered at our sins. She knew and she understood. And so, my friend, when you wonder about who you would turn to, you turn to God. You turn to the God who your mother would have taught you about. You turn to the God who your mother sat down and, 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 and helped you to understand the importance of praying to. You turn to God. And you find comfort in God. You are not going to find the comfort when you, when you turn to, when you, sometimes when you turn to your left and you turn to the right, there ain't nobody. But at least you don't see anybody. But right there, right there in your presence is that one being, that one person who will make all things right and who will dry your tears. And believe me, on the last day, there will be no more tears for you in heaven. You turn to God. Today offers us those opportunities. And on reflection on Maureen's life, one pertinent question we need to ask ourselves is, how do I really contribute to life? And then we ask ourselves, what is it that, what is that one thing, sorry, which we would want, what she would want us to take away from her life and to make the life of others better? How through our living, and how through our living, we can be towers of hope and strength to each other. One of the many things which we learn from Jesus is to lean upon God in every circumstance. His words, 
do not worry, and peace I give to you, gives us the assurance that we can overcome our obstacles rather than our obstacles overpowering us. With God, everything is possible. Even as we face the burden of this sad occasion. Our being here this afternoon, your being here this afternoon, is an indication that we care. It's an indication that we're here because we wish to show our support and to assure this grieving family that we will call their names in prayer, asking God to bring them his peace and his comfort. And so to the family, the friends, we have lost, we have lost a loved one. And yes, it hurts. And I would take nothing away from the grief which any of you feel today. I would not say to you that everything is all right, because it is not. And you know it. You hurt, and we know you will hurt for a long time. But this is also a time for the wider community of friends, of Marines, to take this family under your care and to encourage, support, comfort, and pray with and pray for them. This is a time, brothers and sisters, when God can use each and every one of us to express or show his love and his, protect as, and his protective and supported nature. We will hold their hands. We will hold their hands to let them know that they do not have to make this journey alone. And that as they navigate through the periods of sadness and pain, the water courses will be made easy. And we will stand with them just to let them know that God's, with God's help, we will together face the pain which comes with loss. In this life, with all of its ups and downs, joys and sorrows, blessings and disappointments, we need not give in to the challenges of life. We need not give up on each other. For with love in our hearts, hope reflected in our eyes, graciousness on our lips, peace in our hands, we can, as our Lord did, create a little bit of heaven here on earth. And even as we're separated by distance and time, we can hold on to these words of encouragement. The words of Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10, which says to us, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run to it and are safe. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord, May her soul and the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace.
Let us with confidence and hope confess the faith into which we were baptized. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body. Amen. During the singing of the next hymn, a collection will be taken for the upkeep and maintenance of this church.
please sit or kneel for the prayers of the church. After each petition, your response will be, Hear us, Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. For our sister Maureen, let us pray to the Lord Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for mourning and dry the tears of those who weep. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. You raised the dead to life. Raise our sister to eternal life. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister to the joys of heaven. Our sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our sister Maureen who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism, grant that her death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. Good evening, family, friends, and well wishers. Today it is with a heavy heart that I come before you to give you a sneak insight of the relationship between Maureen and the Carrington family. Now, according to my mother, Amelia, some of you may know her as Mia, said one day, Bly Blue, grandmother. Bly Blue is my husband. Came to her and said, Mia, I don't know how long I have to live, but Bly Blue is going to bring a girl, a young lady to live here. I want you and she to live good, just like your mother and I got along. We shared everything possible. The only thing we did not share was each other trousers. <laughs> I want you to make me that promise. My mother said she was not sure who the young lady was because she was hearing rumors. But Maureen was the one that he introduced to her. She said she liked Maureen 
Maureen was a very pleasantly plump young lady, always with a smile on her face. But Bible being the handsome and ambitious man he was, it seems that other girls were after him. So Maureen come and complain to her and say, Mia, um, Bly Blue, out oh, there looking bold. <laughs> and some of my friends and my family tell me to left him. But knowing that she made the vow to his grandmother, she said, not a hell of that. <laughs> if you love him, stand by your man. And, but at that time, she didn't know that there was a, there was a bun in the oven. <laughs> anyway, over the years, the relationship between the family grew. Every, anyone who did not know thought we were blood related. I remember the times when father, he, he graduated to father, no call, he had get start getting treatment, so he didn't know more blood, but he was father for all of it. Father would come home from work and he would bring lots of flying fish. And we would scale it and burn it all night. Or they would go for potatoes or yams and we were not left out. Maureen was a giver. She gave of her time, her talent, and her treasure. So much so that when, after I move out, when they visit, she would look out, and she would say, Rossi, look out. The people, the people from the mountain top down in the valley, I wonder what I come for. And he would reply, Lord, she don't let that poor woman keep a thing. Every time she hears she get two potatoes, she will come for some. But my reply would be, if the streets from the mountain thought I washed down in the valley, I come to get my share because I, I belong in the valley too. So I come for my share. But Mary would always have something to give. She had gifted hands. Anything that she put she mind to, it came out well. And don't my Rossi talking or he talk. Mary would say, before you go up, come by more. And even if it's a one Christophine or a tomato or even a plant, I mind will make sure that I get something to carry home. Now, Mary was a God-fearing woman, but she, then was, she was not affiliated to any particular church, but she would watch my mother going to church on Sunday mornings. And one Sunday she said, um, me I went to church and get back, and I stay here in the kitchen. My mother said she left from where she did, and she, she went and tell you, she, let me tell you something. You ain't got nothing to keep you back now. You got clothes. You ain't got to look for no clothes to, to go to church. You got clothes. And mine took that to her, and the next Sunday, mine was even ready before her. She got confirmed. She joined the Mother's Union and the Church Army, and later on, she joined the church choir after singing one Sunday morning, and she sang so well that she was encouraged to join the choir. She was a very active member of this church, taking part in the many fairs, kids, seals, and she was active in everything. Even that, we had a, it wasn't part of that Wednesday morning group, but it was a Wednesday morning group that Brother Bath was part of and everything. And Mary would, Mary would used to come to this, to this um, Wednesday morning thing. But she, she liked, I think that she liked, always liked to, you know the saying is, ever so well come wait for a call. Well, she never like push up herself to do anything. But she said that one day, um, Mr. Bradford asked her to read 
and she like kind of shy and tiny. She didn't know if she could have faced an audience to read. But anyway, Buffett and let her. Buffett keep on at her all the time. And she, then she said she read. And from that time, she tell me, you know, every busy morning, know that he want me to read all the time, all the time. So, <laughs> so, but she was willing to do it. She didn't, she didn't say no. She was, she was very willing to, to do it. My sister and I had some good times together, long talks on the phone. Even when she couldn't talk, we still used to talk. That one day, Cheryl said, we want to stay talking. When I done, and Mari said, we talking about you. <laughs> Cheryl turned and said, I'll tell you that's going to be a short conversation call. Ain't much to talk with me. I said, but Cheryl, you know that if, you, if you're in church, and there's a course going, and the course good, and, and, and the course going on and going on, even if you're repeating. So we repeating the same thing we say, but you always tell me repeating. So she laughed and she went long. The funny thing is that although she was not able to speak, I don't know how she could communicate so. I would be playing phone talking with my mother. And then my mother would say, um, I can hear you later, Mari out there. I said, yeah, how she know Mari out there? Well, I, I you think, how she know Mari out there? She said, Mari got two grits for talk the whole stop. <laughs> and then we'll go say the talk. So whenever she hear Mari throwing ring, Bricks for thought you whole she ain't got no more time for me. She got all oh, she time for Maureen. She would tell me she would tell me all kinds of things. We would we would we'd be laughing. We would, she would when she could have taught we would talk all kinds of things. I would say, Tell me that again. I'll tell you no more. You all got to do and then she would come back. What so 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 and then we start off conversation again. So much so that we had, we had a good, good, good relationship. When, when my family was, when, because we had two deaf, son and deaf in our family. And my, it was my sister first and then my brother. Well, when my brother died, he very recently, she was down at that time, but she was still a pillar of strength. But with my sister, she was there she was, she, was, she was the first person that my mother called. My, my, my mother, the, my brother that dead, he, my, my, uh, my mother said and said, tell Mari, come here to my quick. And before, she was there. She was there for us and everything. People see us like, we never had, we, and that really, we never had quarrels like, tri we, the children like would come up to us and we would like it was like a so so committed to each other so much so that my mother was grandma and Maureen was grandmother and that was a bond that was a bond that I don't know if if we could I don't know I don't know Maureen will be missed she will be missed. She will be missed by Harris, member of the choir, after practice every night. Mari would get Harris some steak. I can't repeat the things that Mari would tell Harris. <laughs> can't repeat them in church. <laughs> but Mari would get Harris some steak, and Harris would say, I'm going to put you to my car, you know. I'm going to put you to my car. And she, you can't put me okay, but you can't call me a family. You can't put your, you can't let your family walk home. And Harris would just laugh. Harris would put up, would just laugh. We had some really good fun things together. She and Sterling, another family member, they shared the same birthday. But Sterling claimed that she born first. I don't know who takes she saw. She would always say, I born first that when, when the midwife went to her mother, she get the call, 
she got to go to Boss with St. Andrew for Mari Mother, to Mari Mother. So that is how she claimed that she born first. <sighs> Mari, I can't tell you, I can't tell you how, how much I gonna miss you. I can't tell you how much I gonna miss you. A day don't go by without I missing you. I remember when I first left Bosco Bell and you hear this song, Living Next Door to Alice, you will say, you will call me, you hear the song, you hear me song, you hear me song. I said, what song that? What were you station you listening to? I will tell you what radio station they listen to. She be song coming over, living next door to Alice, listen to it. And she tell me something, she would cry. And then something, she would make me cry too. But it was, it was like, it was crying, but not a sad crying. It was crying of joy to see the relationship that we had together. I know my mother would miss Maureen. Because my mother could call on Maureen anytime. If I, if I call my mother and I don't hear her, I will call Maureen. And she will say, she will either tell me she's going out, or she will say, but she home, this time she must be looking, she must be you do, or somebody that she ain't answering the beat. And she will left and she will go, and then she will come back and tell me she, she all right. So that, that is why, like, when Captain, Father registered that castle, who can she turn to? Who can I turn to but to you, O Lord? Who can I turn to but you? I know that we had a relationship like no other. People would not believe it, but yes, me and Maureen, was, we, shared, we shared things that I wouldn't tell other people that I would tell Maureen, and I know that it's not going to go any further. So I can safely say, yes, we, li we, we weren't blood related, but we were related. We lived as a family lived. We lived as a family lived. That is so this evening. All I can say it to you, Maureen. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will say and shout the victory. Yes, we will say and shout the victory. And certainly, mine got a first for you. She get to meet Shemekha first. So you got to follow. So she get a first for you. Thank you. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, good afternoon. Now, I am not created to speak there, on your relief let, but it would be remiss of me if I did not ask Father Reggie for at least one minute to say something about Maureen. I just mentioned just now about, the, about getting her to read. That was that was one thing that I had to work on to get her, get her to read. But then COVID came in and really put a dampen on that on the Wednesday morning service. So I want to speak really for a minute or so uh, on behalf of the Wednesday morning service. Mayor and all the old Wednesday morning people, I want to uh, speak on behalf of that. Now, we were very close, Maureen and I were very close. Um, we would speak almost every day, even when she was sick, when she couldn't speak, we would message every day, every night, every night I would send her complaint service, and she would listen to it, and she would tell me the next morning how it was. So we, we, we were very close. So since I was not 
proceed to speak, I, I, I'm going to be sharp because they know they got some people over there that tell me to hang and stop talking. But I, I can't do that this evening. So I, I want to say to the, to the family, Jim, and all the family, my sympathy, as I spoke to you all already, things will not be easy without her. But as time goes on, it will become easier and easier and easier and easier. So all we can do now is hope that she had made herself ready as we go into, go into Christmas now in a few days' time, we're in the Advent season now, and that she had made herself ready, prepared to meet her God, our God, and may she rest in peace. The opening words to the anthem, God is going to set this world on fire. As the evening, evening shadows lengthen, I just want to take this short opportunity to extend condolences to the family of our deceased sister, Maureen. I have been asked by the following persons to extend condolences to the family of our sister, Maureen. The Reverend Canon Sonia Hines has 
extended condolences to the family, the Reverend Canon Beverly Seeley Knight, director of St. James Park Church, has asked that you forgive her unavoidable absence. She couldn't be here, but she extends her condolences nevertheless. And the Honorable Colin Jordan, the parliamentary representative for this constituency, has extended condolences as well. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord. May her soul and the souls of the faithful departed through the tender mercies of God rest in peace. Amen. Please stand for the commendation. <coughs> Give rest to Christ, your servants, with your saints. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, and formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain that when, we created, when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us commend our sister, Maureen, to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Deliver your servant, Maureen, O sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set her free from every bond, that she may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitations where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, sheep of your own fold, the lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy in the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. So. Are you ready? Um, I, think there's a, I think there's a hymn now.
you know, I feel not. fact that we will not be having a physical committal to the at the grave at a grave today at this time we the casket will be leaving here to be for cremation and will return for burial on a date to be appointed however that said it is the responsibility of this church to make sure that we commit and we do the right thing and therefore we will have the committal at this time and then um, my brother will look after the other proceedings relative to the burial. Please remain standing as we commit our sister.
Thank you.